baselines. Um, but if you then actually look into the predictions for the individual individual attributes, you see that uh, these numbers here are uh, that the that the variation between different attributes is is extremely high. So we have attributes which are learned extremely well and attributes which are not learned very well. Okay, so so the uh, the what we did was was to do attribute analysis, and so you see you see for example that a couple of binary features that were that were learned very well. So essentially, you know what you're asking here is you're doing a classification task that asks the asks the model to uh, to predict the the continent of a of a country. Um, here, member of organization, you're also asking for, for a multi-class classification with respect to, to organizations, form of government, state, and so on. So these are things that are learned relatively well. Um, these are things that are not, not learned relatively well. Uh, places exported to with and, and currency used. Um, I don't think I'm coming back to these, these attributes here. Just a second. Uh, so, so let me just quickly give you the, the, the outcome of our analysis here. So essentially the problem with, with currency use is that essentially every country, every country has, its, has its own currency, so that's not something that comes out very well in the distributional vectors because it's a very scattered information and places exported to is, is, a, is a very fine-grained um, aspect of knowledge about a country that's also difficult to, to grasp. Okay, then I will book you with first it's, it's, it's a lot of math, so this will be a bit philosophical, but essentially in data, right, you will have, uh, I, I, so here you're talking about which features it predicts the best, and I'm guessing also that there are certain countries for which it predicts features better, right? So, for example, the major ones, usually everything is going better, and there are also certain countries which are better defined. For example, if I say, what's the population of Korea? Wait a minute. Uh, North Korea, South Korea, or both Koreas, or, right? And then, I guess in your, uh, in your model of the world, you have the entities, so you have only South Korea and North Korea. But in the data, uh, of course, it will be mixed. And so I, I don't know the populations, but let's say one is 30 million. And, you know, each each of the two Koreas are 30 million, and together they're 60 million. Mm -hmm. Now, in the data, the data there's a part of the data which are telling you it's 30, and there's a part which are telling you it's 60. And now, um, but if we could actually see this vector space. They're actually all over here or all over yeah. here. There's nothing telling you that yeah. it's 45. And so this, uh, then what, uh, what I'm getting at here is, do you have a sense of confidence? Because uh, in this case, you should know that your confidence is low because you have these very strong signals, either at 30 or 60. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a good question, which touches on, 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 on a number of, of fundamental methodological points. And, and so, um, one that you talk about, that you mentioned, is, is ambiguity, right? So, um, in particular, often with named entities, we have kind of the precise way of, of stating things, right? And then there is kind of an informal way of referring to the, to the same entity. Yeah. Um, but you also have it in the other way, right? So, you, if, if you have one country, you can also refer to this in many different ways. So. Uh, you can say the U.S., the U.S., and the United States, the United States of America, and so on and so forth. Um, now, now the data that we work with here, um, um, or rather the vectors that the Google News guys built, essentially were a pretty. Um, pr there was a pretty strict mapping between the realization in language as a kind of multi-way expression. And the and the free base entities. So, if free base, for example, had as a country South Korea, um, then we would you know then just occurrences of the string South Korea would go into so the. So you were strict. Okay. You were strict. Uh, mm -hmm. You didn't do some sort of synonymization or something. Right. So you're strict, and that that means you lose a lot of data, but at least you yes. keep things accurate. Mm -hmm. okay. And as a matter of fact, I mean, I'm I'm going to come 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 back to. Uh, to, to that in the second part of my of my talk, if, if we get to this, um, uh, because we we, we, we continue and with with personal names you have that you have that uh, much more uh, even much more so um, 
one of the examples I would, I'm going to talk about in, uh, in a couple of slides was, was Einstein. Um, uh, it turns out that, that the model predict, we had a model that predicts essentially categories for people, and for Einstein it, it predicted, I think, um, uh, what was that? Um, uh, sedimentologist. Okay. And we were wondering why, and it turns out that Einstein had a son. And this guy, you know, was one of the leading theoreticians in, you know, river flows in the southwest U.S. or something like this. Okay, so um, it wasn't wrong; it was just the wrong person. And when you look at actual text, then what will often happen is that, I mean, the text starts and give, it gives the full name in the first in the first occurrence, and then we'll just use an abbreviated form. So the text. you could have, you know, what's the population of Java? If it's an island, then also yeah. programming. So the question is, can you uh, actually at training time um, say this sentence is, is actually not about this entity because it's so far off and trim? Right. This is what I mentioned in passing um, a couple of slides ago, is that ambiguity is a fundamental problem in, in distributed semantics, but people have essentially, um, you know, they do joint training at, at this ambiguation, right? So you start building a distributional representation as you go through the text, and after a couple of sentences, you have enough evidence to then say when you see something new, is it likely to refer to the same concept or is it likely to be a different concept, right? And it becomes kind of a clustering task. Right. And you hope you're right, because if you're wrong, you'll really mess everything up. I mean, the problem is that you don't really know what, what the right number of clusters is, right? Um, because every word has, has a different number of senses and then even if you know in principle what the right number of senses is, typically they are hierarchical, so hierarchically structured. So it depends on how you how you how how fine grained you want to make those distinctions. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, so with the with the numeric attributes. Um, <coughs> Yeah, uh, what we what you find is that geolocation works really well. This is something that people, uh, other people have, have also found found before, um, and uh, and then GDP, for example, also works works very well. So again, you know, just to just to uh, uh, remind you what what this means here, essentially. Is it means something like that there is a correlation coefficient of 0.9 between the countries ordered from, from, from north to south and from east to west, um, according to the ground truth and according to the predictions of the model, um, and similarly with, with all of these other attributes. Um, and, uh, and what's interesting here is, is observations like, like this one. For example, the GDP per capita um, is, is, um, is uh, relatively easy to predict and the nominal GDP, so the absolute GDP is, is uh, quite a bit more, more difficult to, to predict, which might be surprising at the, at the first instance. <laughs> but actually there is kind of a nice explanation and I'll, I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Okay, and then we have like date founded, so this is really literally the, the, the year when, when the particular country um, country was um, was established as a country um, and a religion percentage, so the, which is you know, gives and gives the percentage. This is harder to predict. Then? Hmm? It's harder to predict. Yes, these are very hard to predict. Wow. Here, yes. It looks like it should be easier to predict. Why is hard? What What was the founding date of Armenia? Uh, well, well, Armenia is hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that, that's that's another another problem here, right? I mean, some of these concepts don't have like a unique uh, a unique operationalization. Um, I mean, I think France is in the fifth republic now, so uh, you know which one uh, which one do you count? Do you count the, the whatever? Um, but, but, I mean, my, my intuition is that, that, I mean, this comes back to the slide that I had at the beginning, you know, about the different type of contexts. And if you do what we did and only look at the Bell of Words contexts, um, then, uh, then there is not a lot, then, then, then this is very, 
very difficult to get right because you have to pick a number essentially and there are so many numbers just in the context of, of, of any country that picking the right one and figuring out that this is the this is the right the right farming date is, is very 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 hard. Okay. Okay, but maybe let's start with some examples that actually work. Um, so if you look at the geolocation data, for example, here there are a couple of of, um, of countries with the actual um, um, actual actual positions here and the, and the predicted positions um, in, in in blue. So you see these are, tend to be kind of close to to one another. Um, but then there are very very interesting effects. So I mean, I think this this also goes with something that people said before. For some countries, it's um, it's uh, some attributes are easy. For others, they are hard. And so here are a couple of of, of ones where the geolocation is, is is quite bad. And the interesting thing is that they tend to cluster somewhere around here. Okay. And then we looked at what what all of these are. And so um, uh, we found that those were all of these stupid. Uh, all these small, <laughs> small island states, um, and I, I would guess if you ask most people, they would not be able to tell you where those are, right? I mean, where is, where are the Cook Islands? So um, you could do like Microsoft and uh, uh, make a blog post that says you predict better, that your AI is better than human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, and, and so finally enough, one way to look at this is is that, I mean, the model seems to do the same thing that people also do. People say, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's an island, and what other islands do I know? I mean, maybe, you know, like the Seychelles or Mauritius or something, so it's probably somewhere in the Indian Ocean, and this is actually where all these guys are predicted. I mean, my argument loses a little bit of, of coherence by the fact that Mauritius itself is predicted to be, to be in India, okay? Um, but what we said, what we think happens here is that essentially, as I said, you know, um, the what, what the model essentially ends up doing, because what it does, if you remember, is it tries to predict um, here these values from the distributional behavior, which means if two if two vectors.